Okay, so in this video, I want to go through a quick demonstration of utilizing the FEMAP API and how I can use it to enhance the native functionalities and tailor it to my workflows. Um, so the ultimate goal here is to basically optimize uh, the composite bracket I have here. Okay, so I'll quickly run through the model here. Um, the bracket has three different properties, a, a base area, a bend area, and an upright area. And they utilize a layup here that has 11 plies, um, three fabric plies, and then some unidirectional plies uh, tossed in the middle there. And with NAS Trans Solution 200, you can optimize um, ply angles or apply thickness. Um, and this API is basically going to uh, speed up the process of creating the design variables uh, for these plies. And if you're not familiar with optimizing a layup in Nastrans Solution 200, this can be a bit tedious and I'll pull up the docs to show you why. So they have an example here um, optimizing a, a laminate structure and they're utilizing the DESVAR, the design variable to either optimize again the thickness of apply or the material angle and basically they set a lower bounds and upper bounds of uh, what what it can be optimized um, to and from uh, and these are related to a DVPRO1 um, which call out the property that you want to optimize, so the p-comp and the the ID of that p-comp, and then the field ID basically calls out what in that property card is going to be optimized. Um, and this is where it get it gets tricky because uh, for p-comp one field ID for ply one um, for the thickness is going to be 13 and for the angle will be 14. Uh, ply two, the thickness will be uh, 17. Um, ply two's angle will be 18. Um, so you can see when I scroll up uh, back to the P-comp, um, if you counted these out, one, two, three, four, and so on, um, you would eventually land on the field ID of the thickness here and again, the field ID of the angle. Um, so what I did was wrote a script to basically show you uh, the different properties um, in your model and show you the layups that they're utilizing and then set variables um, that you can optimize from. Okay, so I'll pull up my code here and I won't go through all the details, but basically I'm using Python. And I did this because I wanted to create a nice dialog um, for creating all those variables, but also because I can compile this code into an executable. And that way I can make a custom toolbar, basically a custom tool that points to that executable. And I can run this from here instead of opening up a IDE or um, opening the API window and running an API. Um, so when I hit this, I can bring up my API and now I can settle the variables that I wanna create for my optimization. And for this example, what I wanna do is create variables for the ply angles of this bend area and this upright area. Um, so I'm gonna switch to my bend area to start off with. And what I could do is basically apply to all of the different plies with a lower bound and upper bound. Um, but since I have a couple uh, fabric plies um, that are both the same, you know, in the X and Y direction, what I'll do is I'll use uh, apply to the individuals and I will um, set the lower to zero and the upper bound uh, to 90 for all of these uh, unidirectional ply. So I'll continue on with that and you can see that the zero um, angle is where the arrows are pointing here.
Okay, so once I've filled in all the lower and upper limits for the plies that I want to create, or the variables of the plies I want to create, I can go ahead and create, uh, select create variables, and that is going to put those to Femap. Now I'm going to switch to my upright area and do the same thing. Okay, so now that I've created all my variables for optimizing the plies of the different layups, um, I can create my uh, design optimization analysis set. So I'll go in here and create a new. I'll select eight design and topology optimization. And I'm going to jump right to the um, options here. And I want a design optimization, so I'll leave that to the uh, default there. Uh, static analysis. And my goal here is basically to minimize compliance, which is basically maximizing stiffness. Um, I can set the cycles to whatever I want. So again, this is uh, basically the number of iterations to optimize from. So I would bump that up. Um, but what I really want to show here is selecting the optimization variables, which I created via my API. So I'm going to turn all of these on. And again, uh, basically, these are variables for a property, uh, the P comp property. And um, again, these are the field numbers. Um, so for my case, I started at ply two, which was the first unidirectional ply. And that field ID um, number 18 is the uh, material angle. And again, these um, select property two, which is uh, my base area. And then I, I did the same thing for property three, this upright area. And I set all the lower and upper bounds from zero to 90. Um, so now what I'll do next is basically create a, um, a design limit uh, of basically a nodal uh, displacement to minimize on. Um, and I'll show you the results after I've run the solution. Okay, so I'm skipping ahead here and I've solved my uh, optimization analysis set and I ran it for 100 cycles. So you can see basically an exaggerated displacement of my bracket here. And what's nice about design optimization is I get uh, these to create FEMAP functions of the variables and basically demonstrates um, how the optimization went through. So I'm going to right click on all the variables that I created and do show in charting. And then when I open up the charting pane, I can see that, let me expand this a little bit. So it's easier to see. I can see that um, all the plies started at zero degrees. Um, and as each iteration, each design cycle, um, they're basically changing the angle and it finally finds uh, the, the proper or the, the optimized ply angle um, for each variable. So I can see what those land on. So again, this was just a simple example. I just wanted to show you uh, where the FEMAP API kind of shines here and what you, can, what you can do with it to help tailor to your workflows, um, especially for something like this that can be a bit tedious to create.